I'm Ty Stevens. I'm a rising fourth year in the college, and I'm a public policy major with a specialization in GIS. I'm Sam Joyce. I'm a rising third year in the college, and I'm studying environmental and urban studies. There's a new course being taught right now called Introduction to GIS and Spatial Analysis, and it's essentially teaching what GIS science and spatial analysis are um, for social scientists and through a social science perspective. It's kind of a new way of teaching it. Instead of focusing on software and how-tos, um, we're really driving into the theory and concepts behind it. So with all that being said, um, I drove you to, I guess, take the course, and that might be paired with the research that you're doing with it as well? Or So I was in the Calumet quarter, which is one of the offerings through the Chicago Studies Program. And as part of the Calumet quarter, I took a class called Urban Design with Nature that relied a lot on GIS to examine the built environments of some of the neighborhoods on the south side. And so that gave me a lot of experience working with GIS, but because it wasn't a full GIS course, we were mostly just using it for specific applications. So I didn't have a lot of the theoretical background or maybe the full introduction to GIS that I been able to get through this course. I also had some experience with GIS before taking this course. I took intro to GIS and intermediate um, GIS with cartography. I wanted to take this class because it's very much related to the work that I do in public policy. You're minoring in the GIS thing. Is this a new thing or is it something that you thought about before? Because that's kind of an also interesting feature. Each public policy major has a specialization, mm -hmm. so I chose GIS after taking the intro course. And do you guys want to talk about different things that you liked in class or that were interesting or that were useful for maybe the research but also other things beyond? I really enjoyed the labs, which are a lot less open-ended than the assignments, but I found that they're able to be like you once you have this understanding of how this code works to generate this specific outcome, it's really easy to go in and just tweak a few things and make it work for what you want to do. Uh, like when I was making those density maps uh, mm -hmm. for my research, a lot of that was code uh, that we had in one of the labs and I was just able to, okay, so this is how I put it at these specific uh, ranges. I can just tweak this. This is what I need to make a good looking map for my research. and. Mm -hmm. So that really cut down a lot on the effort and like finding tutorials on the internet and all that, mm -hmm. uh, just to have it there in the lab. I've also liked how open-ended the assignments are because um, sometimes I'll email you about an assignment and then you're like, that, why are you doing all of that? But um, it's given me a lot of room to explore on my own. I think learning how to further learn this and especially in the contemporary spatial analysis world, because things are becoming more open source and coding based, things are constantly changing. So all the code that you guys learned this year, I'll have to update in the spring because there's probably new packages and newer, better ways of doing it. So that's, that's um, and I think that's, or and this is maybe in, in general, I think that's really hard to learn um, how to kind of keep, uh, how to navigate that in a traditional um educational environment like a lot of other classes are very you know strict and kind of close-ended <laughs> in different ways so that's been one of the biggest challenges but I think opportunities for you guys what do you want to do when you grow up that's what my advisor would always ask me <laughs> right. yeah so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do after I graduate uh, but I do know that at least over the next couple of years I do want to get a broader exposure to GIS it is kind of weird. It doesn't really fit with what I was sold during the admissions process, that this is such a theory-driven place. So it feels almost kind of weird to be getting this super practical and super useful skill that applies to so many different disciplines. Uh, but we are learning the theory behind it, so like it's OK. <laughs> but I do want to just learn a lot more GIS, because I feel like it's really applicable to a lot of different interests that I have. And that too, I'll put a plug for like the GIS, like how we teach it is the GIS science, which it kind of comes back to that theory, like at every pivot point um, versus just the traditional like way of thinking of it where you're just making a pretty map. So, but you guys do make pretty maps as well. <laughs> one of all of you both. Yeah.
Um, I also want to continue with GIS in the future. I think I want to go into data science after I graduate. I just need some more coding experience, which I'll get during this experience, this research experience. I'm excited because I, so in addition to working with this research lab, I also am um, one of the new lecturers in geographic information science here. Um, and along with the other one, um, the other lecturer, Kevin, um, we will be rolling out uh, and with the Committee on Geographical Sciences, we're rolling out a whole new uh, curriculum um, that's officially starting now. So you guys are the first to <laughs> experience the summer course that will be taught in the future as well. Um, so I'm really excited about kind of updating the JS science curriculum to make it super cutting edge um, and incorporate that theory, incorporate some coding, incorporate some analytics, um, and can continue to kind of pivot back to, to different aspects of research.